The Sentinel is known to be reliable, fearless, disciplined, consistent, courageous, motivated, and skillful. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances. All these qualities start from the mind. Your mind can be your worst enemy or your most powerful weapon. The world becomes your library to help you become better at your craft. Is this the dagger? Learn how to achieve greatness and tap into the Sentinel Mindset. Well, Pablo, thank you so much for, uh, for uh, giving us some of your time here. Uh, we saw your presentation this morning, uh, obviously coming down from beautiful Mexico. Uh, you know, you're able to provide uh, a different kind of context on, I guess, what happens outside of North America. And uh, you, you referenced um, a comment about, you know, uh, a lot of times, I guess, you know, the, the agent that doesn't have a, a gun or should be more aware of, of his surroundings. Now, coming from Canada, we don't have guns in close protection. Everything is all with the mind, okay? Um, can you kind of speak to a little bit about that, of like the importance of, you know, maybe not relying on a, on a handgun? Because a lot of times I think that could also be kind of crippling people's mentality of what they need to do to act in a certain situation. Well, the, the thing with, the, with weapons, and with guns particularly, is people put too much value on the on the on the on the tool as it is because it they they take it as if it was like a magic one it will solve any problem right. you you have an attacker you pull out your gun and you and you fend off if you have uh, a, a, another threat you pull out your gun and it kind of like it gives people a false sense of security because at the end of the day it's nothing but force multipliers, right? right? If you if you go to to statistics and to history, you can you can see that, for example, the, the Secret Service. There's not been one single event in history where the Secret Service has taken their, their guns out and actually repelled an attack. Right. It never happened. Every time when the guns come out, it's usually too late, like the Ronald Reagan incident. Right. The guns never came out. The gun the, the attack was over before the guns uh, right. come out. Yet you would never imagine to have a Secret Service without guns right. because it's a deterrent. Right. Because, I mean, if, if you knew for a fact that Secret Service didn't have any guns, right. I mean, it would be easy. It would, right. be, it would be a joke. Right. Right. So uh, they play a big part in, in what they do and what we do in executive protection. But it also is there's a lot of other tools. There's a lot of other force multipliers. The one thing that you can be sure is that your attacker will always rely on force multipliers. Okay. He's never going to come alone. He's always going to have something that will prove to be greater, a greater force multiplier than what you have and what you're going to be using to, to defend yourself and your principal. Okay. So if you don't have a gun, what that does, it, it makes you understand and it makes you rely on other types of force multipliers. Intelligence is a great one, right? right? How do you do intelligence? What what the hell are you looking for? Right. Like in Mexico, for instance, is how do you know if your principal uh, is being targeted? Mm -hmm. And that is a question that you ask most protection, protection details and they say, well, you look for someone that's surveilling you. Well, no, not really, because that information has to come from somewhere. It, and that's why I, I mentioned in my, in my conference, we need to talk to the criminals. We don't need to think like criminals because we're not criminals and we're never going to be able to think like criminals if we're not. But you need to talk to them. Uh, Daniel Arismendi, the, the ear chopper, very famous yes. kidnapper in Mexico, he would say there's a very important character in the whole process of choosing uh, a kidnap victim. And it's, he, he, he calls it the person that puts you or el que te pone. And that means that someone near to you, near to the to the inner the family's most inner circle is the one who comes and offers the information okay once they have that information then they've chosen you yes now they need to corroborate that information they need to make sure that you're a good business yes. and that that is when they are vulnerable okay but now all uh, other places is monitored jails yes most information it's it, it's sold or it's offered within the jails. That's where the bans uh, exist. And that's when someone that gets, in, gets a piece of this information that would allow for a kidnapping or an attack or any kind of attack to happen. What does he do with information? He offers it in the jail. Okay. In the jails, the bans would say, well, they, they, they actually they auction that kind of information and then they, they use it for different things. So 
that when you have to when you don't have that weapon because you're not ready for that attack you're not ready for that fight because yeah. you know you're going to lose you need to go back a few steps and start using other types of force multipliers okay right you you go into the jails you pay off people inside the jails because especially in third world countries even here, even 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 in first world countries, that's the reality everywhere. In jails, money there there are other other currencies, but the currency in jail will buy you a lot of privileges. Okay, right? Yeah. Listen, uh, to me, like I think that's great from a context perspective. Pablo, you grew up, uh, you know, um, obviously in in a, in a very different world than maybe what a lot of people like that are in Canada or the U.S. have grown up yes. in. Do you notice any differences in the mentality of maybe like the North American mindset? opposed to kind of like, again, uh, what your experience and exposures have been. Uh, do you find that there's almost like a, almost like a uh, entitlement element or, or an, an, an uh, I know it all or a ego centric aspect of, of just the way the work is looked at? No, not really. I think there's a lot that that ego that you're talking about. Uh, it exists in Mexico and Latin America just as well. Okay. And that has been the source of many problems. Uh, the one thing that I notice, uh, the difference that I notice is the way people prepare themselves okay. for, for the job. Uh, in, in places like the United States, uh, I, I don't have a lot of experience with Canada, but places like yes. the United States, yes. I still see a lot of people talking in hypothetics in if this would happen or if that would happen and and then they go and they go to uh to movie references right movies are very 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 bad teachers because a, a, a thief or a an attacker will never base his or her operations on a movie right because movies are there to entertain not to inform right, right? and i still see uh, we are preparing for the worst possible scenario but sometimes the worst possible scenario of what i see in, in the united states and i assume canada yes. could be something like that because you don't have a lot of real real life experiences that's right are based on what if we had an attack like if we saw in that movie or like we saw in that documentary and we we tend to forget to look for motive okay or to establish the motive what motives would motive would would move someone to do something against my principle and most of them when you when you analyze them like really analyze them you'll you'll see that there is nothing to be gained in the in the scenes that you see in movies. Right, right right so it's not going to happen and that is the one thing that i see different and the other thing is here it has to be it has to do with a, an administrative type of uh, of process right you get a job and you got a job to do and everybody takes it very seriously which i love because that doesn't really happen in mexico sometimes right or in other places and people train constantly train constantly trying to to expand their abuse and that doesn't happen as well in, right. in, in Mexico as much. But the one thing that you get in Latin America that you don't really get here is people are afraid. Okay. Because they might, if they run into this situation that they thought hypothetical or they went into training and they told them this might happen, they know it really happens. Yes. And I know, and they know that the possibility of you know, walking out of that situation is, okay. is usually pretty slim. So that is a very, very big difference in mindset. Okay, last, qu America. last question, because I know it's lunchtime right now. Yeah. We're some food. What do you use as your, and I mean, you're seasoned, man. You've been doing this for a long time and you have full operations. But what do you, what did you use or you still use as your motivational factor to push forward? I mean, when things are difficult, I mean, we've I was talking to Byron yesterday and just hearing his war stories, you know, when things are about to kind of get unpredictable and things could happen at any time what is your internal motivation or mindset to help you push through something well i'm obsessed with human behavior right so what is my motivation is to see the results of the things that we develop and the, the sops the training all that to see the results when things get really really bad Right. And how it plays out. And when people come back and they tell you, my, my experience is in driving. We do mostly driving. We don't get into uh, a, a lot of other things in executive protection. We have partners for that. And we don't want to, you know, venture into their yes. areas. But in driving, I get all these stories of people coming back and saying, I, I had this situation where another car got off in front of me and it was wet and I lost control of the car with my principal in the back. And I was able to regain it because it... it, it 
came back to me. It came back what I've seen, and what, I, what we've done, and uh, and I was able to correct the car. And actually, I got you know a recommendation, and I got uh, yeah. I got recognized at the at the, the play at the workplace because I actually saved the day. Right. And that kind of thing is what actually okay. I, I just love hearing that. Okay, good man, because we do represent executive protection in Canada and the branding and all. And I know that you are the extension to Mexico as well. Uh, what was your, I guess. Uh, you know, like that said, let me let me kind of go down this road as well. Uh, well, it's actually pretty simple. In Mexico, getting trained, getting access to information, it's expensive and it's not available to everyone. And I like two main things of what Byron does. One is he brings the information down to the the foot soldier, the guy that is out there that's working that doesn't have the time or is not allowed the time because I mean we all have time, but he's not allowed the time to to go out and actually train and, and sharpen the saw. And the other thing is that I love about the EPL and what Byron's doing is uh, I love the culture. Okay. That sen- I, I, I believe that that sense of belonging that you can get from what Byron was doing and you know feeling part of that team, part of that community if you want to see it like that i think it builds uh, it builds criteria which is important in decision making and it makes people it, like go up a step from what everyone else is doing and you're, you're right. part of a team you're part of a uh, culture you're part of this this com- common knowledge that will help you down the line okay. and uh, i think that's pretty valuable I think okay that's, pretty that's, that's amazing thank you for your time and i'll tell you this epl canada will be coming to mexico and we will be connecting man i'll tell you that right now we we do a, the, the largest executive protection uh, event in latin america is done in mexico once a year it's called the ep summit we okay. would love we had byron uh, yes i remember you're still speaking there and would love to have you there next year a hundred percent hundred percent thank you so much for your time i appreciate it brother thank you very much thank you This podcast is brought to you by Executive Protection Lifestyle Canada. Make sure to drop by next week and don't forget to subscribe.